Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, nearest neighbors and the yeah, spoiler alerts with Lambda architecture. Uh, but first, I want to start with Haiku that I like composed yesterday. And uh, it starts like that. Dense vectors or embeddings are the new oil. I mean, you can see how many people are talking about them. Uh, but sometimes refinement costs are too high because dense vectors are dense and storing them and searching through them might put an excessive load on your search engine. Uh, so why this matters? Again, we are doing recommendations at OLX Group. And uh, uh, this comes like uh, at a price with our platform because like our platform content is fully generated by users. Uh, we don't have a standard catalog and even if it's the same item, uh, we're gonna have two SKUs for the same item because uh, they're created by two different users. And then we have millions of items that are added and removed daily to our platform. And uh, in recommendations, uh, we want, as soon as the item is posted, we want to have recommendations for it, obviously. But also we want to recommend this item to the other items that are already in the catalog. So our constraints is that we have embeddings for our items. But it's not feasible to store this uh, item embeddings in our search engine for many reasons, uh, like mostly technical, but it's also uh, about implementation costs and so on. So we still want uh, to use uh, this item embeddings uh, for our recommendations. Which options do we have? And uh, to, to, to see what do we need to do, actually, how can we avoid uh, putting them into solar? Uh, let's see what do we need to do with them. I will put them into two dimensions because like. Okay, uh, embeddings are multi-dimensional, but obviously uh, we need to have a good story here. So imagine we have some embedding space with four items in it. And then new item comes to this space. Uh, okay, and then obviously it uh, it says first, hey neighbor, and everybody answers, hey neighbor, and it finds its closest neighbors. So you have closest, second, third, and fourth neighbors. And this, this would be like the most similar items. The closer, the more similar, and uh, the better the recommendation is. But when this item entered this space, it actually ruined the space because if we look at the previous items, for the previous item without the new item, the closest one was the left, a top left one, then there was the second and the third one. But actually, the new one becomes now the second closest item to the uh, to this item, and then the second item because it becomes the third one, and the third because of the fourth one. So. Actually, the space constantly changes, and uh, we need to find some smart way to adapt to the changes in the space. And uh, like a, on a high level, what we do with this flow? We, we get the new item, we calculate the neighbors for it. We, we calculate the closest neighbors, but then we take this closest neighbors and we update the neighborhood. We call it neighborhood, so it's, it's the closest neighbors, but then we recalculate the similar items for these items as well. And then you can see in the bottom that uh, the green item gets red items. It's uh, recommendations for the new item, but also this green item started being recommended to some old items in the platform. And then we can actually proceed with that and store this all of these items in, uh, in a fast cache, uh, which we can quickly access. And uh, then speaking about the uh, more of architectural flow, we have a stream of item updates uh, that uh, we listen to. So if uh, the item was posted or updated or something else. Uh, and then we have uh, this application that constantly listens uh, to the stream. And uh, it's, uh, it's a simple application, let's say. And it, and, and it does a job that you saw on a previous uh, slide. It calculates the nearest embeddings, uh, the nearest neighbors. And it uses files and it's SQLite in our case. And then it actually stores these items in a fast cache. And uh, then we also have a daily bad job to avoid drifting, both model drifting and this embedding space drifting, because like obviously this is not, these are not precise uh, calculations. And uh, actually, if uh, you take a step back and uh, look at all of these steps, it becomes clear that it's a very classical Lambda architecture that we built here with a speed layer, a batch layer and a serving layer. Uh, that's uh, basically it. So the learnings from it is that embeddings is like is really a great way uh, to represent information. And that's probably where the field is going. And uh, the more and more people are talking about embeddings, the more 
uh, companies are using them, the more products are getting embedding support and so on. But still, it's not a commodity. And uh, uh, you can still find a way to use them in production, for example, with like caching and Lambda architectures. Uh, of course, like this approach will have some limited ranking capabilities and everything else, but at least you can use them. And uh, like, uh, or actually one of our companies, uh, like one of the companies in our group, Avito, uh, it actually uses Sphinx uh, and uh, they are storing their embeddings in Sphinx and uh, they, they're able to produce a brute force of up to 5 million vectors, usually like one, two million, not up to 5 million. The brute force uh, of this and ranking uh, afterwards in under 10 milliseconds. Uh, there is a link there, but sorry, it's in Russian, but uh, I'll be happy to chat about this uh, offline uh, and answer any questions if you have.